All right, hello everybody, and welcome to IA Command. This is TV Boy, and it is a very busy time for Imperial Assault right now. We've got a lot going on in the game. We're in uh, full swing for season nine IACP. Uh, we've got a Depticon coming up. We've got my uh, campaign playthrough. Uh, Stefan start, is doing campaign playthroughs now. It's awesome. We're, we're wrapping up the JJAX Clone Wars tournament, and so I wanted to kind of put a cap on that and get these out. Trying to get all these videos out covering all this stuff. It's crazy, guys. But we've got the finals from the playtest tournament that JJAX hosted using his custom uh, Clone Wars skirmish content, and I'm going to be uh, going over the the log review, it's going to be in two parts, not the video, but the logs. I'm going to have to load up part two when they get to it. Uh, apparently, they played it over two days, so this isn't supposed to be really epic. Um, by the way, I did play my my final game for the tournament last night. We live streamed it between Wesley and I. Um, absolutely crushed him with my two figure list, uh, but uh, didn't didn't uh, change the outcome much. Uh, but you should definitely check it out if you haven't. It's a little bit longer than my normal game log review since it's obviously we're playing it live. Uh, but you get to hear us actually talking through our moves uh, in voice chat. Also, JJax was on there, the creator of the cards. You got to hear his commentary over ours while we were playing, which is pretty funny. And the post-game discussion was really interesting as well. So, um, yeah, so check that out. And then let's get into this game. We've got the, again, this is the final. So there were six rounds of... Uh, the tournament. Let's see. Let me look at the the roll better here. Uh, tournament page. Is this? Yeah, this is the Clone Wars pre-release. So we had. It looks like we had four rounds of Swiss, uh, and then we had our top four, which was myself against John, uh, who's playing here, and then Wesley against Palantiri. So John and and Palantiri both won in their semifinals, and now came to the final round. Uh, and so that's why we had the loser semifinals uh, was myself against uh, Wesley. But this is the winner's finals, and so the winner of this game will have won the entire tournament and proven they are the master of the Clone Wars. So this is actually a pretty sick matchup. Uh, no more mirror matches or anything like that. We've got a Pure Republic versus uh, CIS game. And we've got Jedi versus droids. Uh, looks pretty good, actually. Oh no, wait. Are these droids? These are droids and bounty hunters. Okay. So let's look at uh, John's list first. Uh, you can see we've got the Jedi Knight card here. Uh, it's all Jedi. So actually, let's look at what's tying this list together because it's all Force users. So we've got let's see, Jedi Strike Force, and I did play this card last night as well, but in a very different list. Uh, this allows you to, for zero points, if all your figures are force users, and by the way, I should mention for this uh, custom game, anytime you see the rebel symbol, that is actually supposed to be a republic symbol. Uh, it does get a little bit confusing at times, but just know that if you see a rebel symbol, it's republic. If you see an empire symbol, that's meant to be a CIS um, Confederate of Independent Systems separatist symbol. So those are the two factions. Uh, and this card says that whenever uh, you, so your player, plays a force user command card, you may exhaust this card. If you do, until the end of the round, you may play that card from your discard pile on a different activation. Uh, to do to do so, the figure it is played on must suffer strain equal to its cost. So that's the cost of the card, not the cost of the figure. Um, and then after playing the card in this way, it's removed from the game. So we often call that returning it to the game box is the official game parlance. So you can't reuse that card. So get some extra use out of your force user cards. And then let's go through it. Um, we've got, oh, one more card is, what is it? Oh, it's in a, I think it's a neutral card. Serene Light. So this allows the Republic list to take Rebel um, command cards. By the way, this is where it gets confusing because he's using Rebel for both Republic and Rebel, but understandable with the limitations of the tool. Um, so that means that these Rebel uh, Republic Force users are able to use Rebel Force user cards. And then let's go through the figures we've got. We've got good old Obi-Wan. Uh, very powerful, 12 points. Very passive, but very powerful. 
um, able to give a defensive reroll to any figure within two spaces while they're defending, including himself, and when he does so, he applies plus one block. And then he has a similar ability to Luke's uh, deflection, but it does two damage instead of just one damage. Next up, we've got Mace. So exciting to see Mace Window get played. I don't think I've seen him played yet. He's 10 points, 15 health, automatic pierce 3 on a, on a green, red, yellow. Speed 5, just a single white defense die, unlike Anakin and Obi who have two defense dice. Uh, but he's got Surge for Cleave 2 and Surge for plus 2. And he's got Brutality from Vader, you know that one. Perform two attacks, each must have a different target. Then he has Execution. After you resolve an attack, if the target suffered damage and has suffered damage greater than or equal to its health minus 3, it is defeated. Wow, so if something has 8 health and you and it's got 5 damage on it after Mason to attacks it, it dies. So that's kind of amazing. He's got a built-in assassinate, basically. Uh, Way of the Vornskir. After an attack targeting you is resolved, if you suffer 3 or more damage, become focused and then gain 2 movement points. So he'll be moving all around. Then we've got Yoda. And I'm hoping I'm using the right uh, version for this. Uh, where is Yoda? Oh, it's Master Yoda. So we're going to look under M. Right by Mace Windu. Uh, so this guy's been updated as well. Seven points. He's also green, red, yellow. Search for Pierce 3, search for plus 2. Uh, importantly, he has Assault, so he can perform multiple attack actions. Instead of just being limited to one action for an attack. He has a Taru Mastery. If you resolve an attack, place your figure in an empty space with an X spaces, where X is the number of Surge results. Even cancelled and spent results. So I believe that even uh, goes through like uh, evades that would cancel a surge. So that's interesting. He's going to be moving around a lot. And then, man, there's a small text. Precognition. When an attack targeting you is declared, you may apply minus, oh wait, plus one dodge, limit once per round. Okay, that's cool. So you can dodge on command, but once per round. And then wise counsel. Choose a friendly figure within three spaces against two of the following. Recover two damage, become focused, gain one power token, or discard one harmful condition. So that's Yoda, kind of the hybrid support offense figure. We've got Ahsoka, six points, uh, mobile, 10 health, also green, red, yellow attack, melee attack. Speed 5, has search for plus 2 and search for pierce 3, and can search to gain any token, um, any da uh, power token. She's got the twin sabers, so that's the... <coughs> so we know that ability from her rebel version. She's got study, which is special action to gain one power token. Not sure if that's worth a special action, but Padawan Learner says you may discard one power token, any power token, to copy and use one ability, paying any cost as normal, from a friendly force user within three spaces, until the until the ability resolves. Okay, so that's interesting wording. But now we see why study cost an action is because you're basically taking an spending an action so that you have the resources needed to copy abilities. That, that's interesting. It'll be interesting to see how it um, works with the other figures. Because, like, you could use that with Obi-Wan. Uh, if you, you could use that with Obi-Wan and use Ardent Protector twice to get plus two blocks. Although well, she only has one defense dice. So you'd, but you could still get plus one, plus two blocks. Or you could use Soresso Deflect with both of them if they're both next to each other and do four damage to something after um, either Ahsoka or Obi-Wan get attacked. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Ahsoka and Obi-Wan sticking pretty close together. And then finally we have the generic Jedi Knight. Now I know there's two Jedis in that picture, but it's only one figure for the deployment card. 5 points, 9 health, 5 speed. Um, all the Jedis are really fast back in the day. Surge for Pierce 3, Surge for plus 2, Surge to gain 1 power token. They have Foresight, so it lets you reroll a defense die. We've seen that on Diala. Guidance. When you gain a power token from any source other than Guidance, Another friendly figure within three spaces of you gains a power token of the same type. Nice, so they're a power token copier. And then they have pounce, like from the next two. So it lets you move three, uh, put your 
configure in a space within three spaces and perform an attack. So they're very fast, or at least this Jedi singular is very fast. Um, because it's five speed plus three movement from pounds. So with three attack dice, so very strong. Um, and then let's talk about Palantiri's list. We've got a confederate list, but it's got two um, bounty hunters in it, which I believe is allowed by the higher mercenaries card, which lets you include up to two scum deployment cards in your army. Uh, this is for, again, CIS. This is not for Empire. Uh, so looking at it, we've got Django Fett, who I believe was very strong in the beginning. But I think he recently got toned down, so let's see what he's looking like now. Eight points for ten health. He has plus one block and plus one evade and mobile and speed six. So he's looking pretty swole still. Um, but I think he's slightly less durable than he used to be. And he's got two surges for pierce one and then a double surge to gain two damage power tokens. And then he has strafe. Perform an attack. After the attack resolves, you may move up to two spaces. Then you may perform an attack. Okay, so he still gets his two attacks here. Um, actually, I wonder if this is... Do I have the old one? I'm going to double check in the... In the... Um, Google Drive. Is this current? Oh, yeah, here it is in the Google Drive. Same one, 8 points, 10 health. Strafe, yep, and then collect bounty. Okay. Uh, special action, perform an attack, targeting figure with the highest figure cost among the figure's army. Become focused and remove one die from its defense pool. After the attack resolves, if that figure was defeated by this attack, become focused and gain three VPs. Okay, so you're either choosing between multiple attacks and movement or getting three extra VPs um, and removing a uh, defense die. So that's interesting. And then Cad Bane is our other bounty hunter. Or, I don't know, is he a bounty hunter? Somebody tell me in the comments. Cad Bane, bounty hunter? Yes, he is a hunter. And I played against this guy last night. He is dirty. Let's suck at this. He's uh, five points for nine health, two green dice attack, plus one damage built in, and plus two accuracy. So look out, Greedo. Uh, search for plus two damage and plus one accuracy, and search to focus. And then he has a dirty trick. Uh, when you declare an attack, if the target is readied, look at a random command card in your opponent's hand, and you may discard a card to play or discard it if the target is exhausted. It counts for control. Sorry, if the target is exhausted, then instead it counts for control as if it were under your control until the end of the round. So long ability, but basically, well, there is no basically here. There's a ton of different effects depending on different parameters. If you target something and that figure is readied, you get to look at a random card in their hand, and then you can discard a card from your hand to either use that card as if it were in your hand or discard it from their hand, usually because the timing restrictions don't work out. Um, or if they're exhausted, then you get to have them as your control minion which means that any objectives or uh, objects or spaces they're controlling, you actually control, which is seems pretty good if you attack a uh, figure on a on a terminal. And then quicker draw, <laughs> quicker draw. Once per mission, so once per mission, this got me last time, at the start of the round, activate Cad Bane. So this ability is kind of nuts because it means that he gets to activate, if you have initiative, I, I think I kind of think that this ability should not work if you have initiative already. Like, should, say, if your opponent has the initiative, activate Cat Bane. Because when you do it, when you have initiative, not only is it super powerful in that you're chaining activations together, uh, it's super powerful that you get to activate Cat Bane before your opponent can play any start of round command cards, which also means that he can potentially steal one of those start of round command cards from the hand. Um, which is super powerful and kind of frustrating, I gotta say, because there's no way to counter this ability. Like, you can't negate it the way you can against Take Initiative or anything like that. The worst you could do is maybe try and stun him, but he's five, so it's easy to get eight activations. But, um, yeah, we're gonna see that do a lot of damage here, I think. And then the rest of this is gonna be, uh, 
the Confederate droid cards. Let's see what we've got. We've got Droid Decca, so that's fun. I did get to play those a little bit. Uh, droid Decca, the Elite. Let's see if they changed. No, nope, they're looking pretty much the same. So, it, whenever they suffer damage, if it's less than 4 damage, they suffer no damage. Importantly, that applies to non-attack damage. So, stuff like um, Overdrive, Command Card, that deals damage to do extra actions, uh, they don't take any damage from that. Stuff like Grenades, stuff like Blast, Cleave, all that stuff they are completely immune to. Um, you have to hit the, you have to attack them and deal 4 damage minimum put damage onto them so um let's see what else oh we've got the scorpionek so that's from the mandalorian show oh no that's from the Bo boba fett show Blech. 10 points 13 health massive figure with plus one block search for plus one damage and blast two search for plus two damage and blast some one so you can get up to blast three which is pretty good this also has the energy shield. Also, it's a droid, so we're going to see this one um, possibly using overdrive, although it doesn't have assault uh, like the droid deca does. That's what makes the droid decas really good with overdrive, is that extra action you get from overdrive can be an attack. Um, let's see. Scorpion. And then shield projector. When attack targeting a friendly figure is declared, if you are adjacent to the targeted space, you may grant them energy shield until the end of your opponent's activation. That's pretty strong too. Uh, and that's limit once per round. Okay, and then we've got the what are these? Octopara. Three points for a single figure. Health five. It's a droid. Blue red attack dice, speed four. These are also massive, which is interesting, but I believe they're on a small figure base. Plus two accuracy, search for plus one damage, pierce one, and plus one accuracy. Try shot, perform three attacks. Each attack must have a different target. I remember these from the cartoon show, the Cartoon Network, not the not the CGI one, but the one before that that was made by the guy who made Samurai Jack. These are fun. They're really tall, so I guess that's why they're massive, and then they just shoot lasers out all over the place. Oh, towering you are not small <laughs> that's i don't know why that is hilarious text that is hilarious ability text i think that's my favorite ability of text in this whole expansion you are not small he should have he should spell it with a o small um okay so we've got that one and we've got the elite as well this one's five points you got nine health plus three accuracy which is an improvement also plus one damage pierce two for the surge We've got Tri Shot and Towering. We also have Viral Warhead. When defeated, roll red a red die. What? Roll a red die. Probably for each non droid figure within Oh, hold on. When defeated, roll a red die. Okay, and then sh should be a period there. Each non droid figure within two spaces suffers strain equal to the damage results, and if a surge is rolled. Uh, should, probably should be a comma there. Becomes weakened. Okay, so if it dies, it kind of it's like a bomb. It goes off, but it deals strain and weakened, not damage. All right, this should be interesting. I have not seen. I've seen the Droideka. I've seen Django and Cad, or at least the old Django. I've not. I don't think I've seen this the new one in action, and I've not seen the Scorpionek or the Octoparas in action. Also, he's got um. Scavenged Weaponry lets you a, a droid or vehicle. Okay, so that's on Django. Exhaust this card for when you declare an attack to apply plus one damage to attack results. <coughs> okay, so whenever if Django dies, then it's going to start passing around to the other droids. Um, I think Targeting Computer is just better, strictly better, by the way, than Scavenged Weaponry for the most part, especially if you're doing multiple attacks. The problem with scavenge weaponry is it doesn't ready when it passes to somebody else, so you only get to use it once per round. Whereas with targeting computer, you could be getting multiple uses out of the fig out of a figure each round, especially a figure as tanky as Django is. Um, but anyway, this should be interesting. Uh, let's get into the game now. I'm gonna try uh, since these figures 
uh, the arts are a little bit crowded by the cards. Uh, I'm going to try something new. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, I'm going to be able to zoom in on the map so we can see who's actually moving. But let's get into it. Alright, so this looks like we're starting off with Palantiri. I believe John is passing. And it looks like the Octopara is going to move to control the terminal there and open the door. It's interesting that they're massive. So, what are the implications of that? Well, there's some command cards that only massive figures can play, I believe. I believe they can use Crush. Um, let's see. Crush is any figure, any massive figure. So use when you end your movement in spaces that can. Oh, that's the other thing. That of course, a massive figure can end its movement, overlapping any number of small figures, and will then push those figures out of the way. So these small octoparas can actually step on small figures and push them out of the way. And then you can use something like Crush to deal 4 damage. So that's pretty good. Um, deployment. Okay, and then we are playing, by the way, on Rogue AI. So this space right here, you've got the four objectives. The blue one is down here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but what happens is when you, whenever a figure overlaps one of these objectives that has a strain token, they get two VPs and then you shuffle the strain token off to another random objective, either the yellow, the green, or the blue, which is again down here. So it looks like Palantir is setting himself up to be the first one to claim the token since he has opened his door first. And now it looks like we are starting off with Master Yoda for... John's side. I'm going to focus up the regular uh, Jedi Knight and then also going to give them a power token which allows the Jedi Knight to then bounce that power token off with guidance to it looks like Ahsoka which is nice because now Ahsoka can spend her power token to copy any ability. Yep, There goes Yoda. Going to be on the terminal it looks like. Just realized I should probably be zoomed in so you guys can see what's going on. I've got hotkey set up, but I'm gonna. It's, it might take me a little bit to get used to um, remembering to zoom in on the map. All right, so now we're activating for Palantiri. Okay, there we go. Now you can actually see the terminal. Alright, so that is... The Droideka. The Droideka can actually move really fast. So we're going to claim the uh, red objective. Two points for Palantiri. I'm going to shuffle it to the blue objective. And then because he's in wheel form, he's getting, he's six speed, so he can move 12 spaces. So it looks like he's going to be able to claim two objectives around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, not quite. He's not quite able to get to the objective. Okay. So it looks like John is passing. And we've got a focused. Oh, no, no not passing. There's two droid decas in this group. And one of them is focused. How did that happen? I'm 
actually not sure how he got focused. I'm guessing there was a... Oh, there it is. Yep, shared experience got played. Okay, so shared experience let him spend three movement points to become focused. And then whenever a droid or vehicle is defeated, Palantiri gets to redraw that card. Okay, and now it looks like... Obi-Wan's going to move to the terminal and open the door. Cad Bane going to activate. Going to declare an attack here on Yoda. Now, interestingly, um, Obi-Wan is adjacent to Yoda. He won't be able to deflect damage back to Cad Bane. But Obi-Wan does have line of sight to the droid Decca uh, down here. So Obi-Wan can deflect two damage onto that droid Decca from this Cad Bane attack. And also interestingly, uh, Dirty Trickery is going to... This is exactly what we are talking about. Yoda's going to be contesting the terminal for, for uh, Palantiri. So getting some command card denial here. Uh, Pwned is going to have to have keep two figures on that terminal just to prevent Palantiri from drawing an extra card. And it looks like it was a dodge. And then, yep, here we go. Uh, it's going to do two damage. Oh, is he not? It looked like he was targeting the Droideka. So, yeah, the Droideka should have taken two damage from Obi-Wan. Uh, let's see. Looks like Ahsoka activating, going to be taking a special action to uh, gain a power token. And now we've got the Scorponek coming up. Gonna push Cad Bane out of the way, and looks like he is going to be taking an attack at Ahsoka here. Oh no, wasn't able to attack. Okay, Jedi Knight is gonna be moving up. Yep, gonna move with the Jedi. Uh, looks like he's not quite sure. Oh, interesting. So, Jedi Knight using. Um, Force push command card to pull Mace Windu. Oh no, Mace Windu is using it to pull the Jedi Knight. And then going to be able to replay that card next round. What is what is John up to? So Mace Windu moved all the way down to the uh, blue objective. We've got the Octopara activating. Move up. And I don't know what, uh, I don't think Django has activated yet. Oh, interesting. So another, another, um, benefit to being massive is that, uh, small figures don't block line of sight to other small figures. However, this Scorponek droid is blocking line of sight because it is massive. So I think they played that incorrectly. Massive figures do block line of sight to other massive figures. So this Octopora should not be able to attack. Um, should not be able to attack Ahsoka here. It looks like Ahsoka. Oh, is that going to make range? Yeah, it is making range. But, um, and then once again. Also, uh, we should be seeing two damage from Obi-Wan here going onto that uh, droid Decca. For some reason, deflection damage is just really hard to remember for players. Like, we say this with Luke's Jedi Luke all the time. Nobody remembers to use his, de his deflection ability for some reason. But I think it's really punishing when you forget to use it on Obi-Wan because it's such a huge part of his kit with this card. Like... Yeah, Arden Protector is great, but if you're not dealing the two damage with Deflect, you're not getting your value. Because otherwise, he's just a—he's just an attack stick. He's just a walking attack. 
that doesn't do anything else. He doesn't get extra attacks like a, a queen piece should be. So let's see if they remember. Uh, for some reason, the Octopora took two damage. I'm not sure why. Okay, and now it looks like the Jedi Knight is going to play Army of Brothers. Uh, choose one, just gonna gain two more points, then another friendly figure within three spaces does the same. And it looks like he's gonna go for an attack on the Scorpionic Droid, which is a focused attack with a surge. By the way, that would have also been the perfect time to have uh, Ahsoka use her ability to copy the deflection. Because again, they're right next to each other. John has it set up perfectly. I do see two damages on the Drodeca here. Um, I don't know how the two damage got onto the Octopara. But I think what we should have seen... Oh, you know what? Ah, you can't even do that because the Droideca has energy shields. That's what it was. I'm sorry, guys. And I'm sorry, John. <laughs> uh, you can't deflect on the Drodeca because it has energy shields. So whenever it would suffer the two damage from deflect, it takes nothing. So that is actually pretty rough. Um, the Scorpionic also has that. Uh, and then he doesn't have line of sight to that Octopara either. Wow, energy shields just straight up counters Obi-Wan. Like, counters this list hard. Because I bet a lot of the damage output is meant to come from Obi-Wan and Ahsoka copying that uh, deflect ability together. So that's rough. That is rough. Um, but okay, we're gonna attack the Scorpionic Droid, which has 13 health and plus one block. Let's see if I can't... Uh Scoot this down a little bit. Now that nobody's in their deployment zone anymore. Alright, so Jedi Knight attacking with focus and a surge token. Plus one block. Okay, that's going to do a lot of damage. Three, six, uh... 7, 8. Looks like 7 damage going through. Oh, they're saying 8 damage. Looks like... Oh yeah, 8 damage. Yep. Alright, and now Django is going to activate... Django's pretty scary. Going to utilize the mobile... Oh, not going to use the mobile. Just going to go for the Jedi Knight here. Will be interesting to see if he goes for the um, collect bounty or the strafe. But I think we are going to see um, scavenge weapon abused here. Yeah, I'm not sure why the Jedi's being getting weakened. Gonna re-roll the Jedi's dice with its foresight ability. And then looks like you're going to do 4 damage. Oh no, it's going to do 6 because of the weakened, which again, I don't know why uh, he's weakened. Somebody tell me in the comments. How did the Jedi Knight get weakened there? Okay, and then Strafe. So that was Strafe. And now going to be doing... I think that's going to kill it. Yeah, he has to reroll for the dodge. Doesn't get it. And that's a dead Jedi. Palantiri goes up to 7 VPs. And it looks like Palantiri's going to have the initiative here going into round 2. Okay, so Django attacking Ahsoka. So Django does not have the shields. So Django can absolutely take the double uh, deflect damage here if Ahsoka spends that token to copy uh, Obi-Wan's ability. Alright, so here is the attack. 
Looks like it is a um, strafe attack. I don't think there's any way for Django to avoid um, getting hit by the deflect damage. Although, with the strafe, the it says move with two spaces after the attack resolves. And I believe that is the same wording for Obi-Wan's Ardent Protector. Or for Suresto Deflect, after the attack resolves, yeah. And so Django does get to move before the deflection ability can go off. But he might have to give up his second attack. Looks like he did one damage to Ahsoka. Now, Obi-Wan doesn't have line of sight to Django, but Ahsoka does, so Ahsoka should probably spend that token to deflect. I mean, unless John's got some other plan for Ahsoka's ability, although it looks like he's about to spend it. I mean, he spent a surge token on defense, so I'm assuming he's going to use the deflect. Okay. So did not go for the deflect. I wonder what he used to copy the ability. Maybe the, oh he must have used the, um, he didn't, I mean he didn't use the Ardent Protector there. Editor TV boy here, uh, I figured it out. He used Yoda's precognition to add a dodge to the result. So that's what he was doing. Yeah, I wish I knew. Um, Alright, well, Ahsoka activating. I'm gonna go for an attack on the Scorpionic. Remember, it needs to deal 4 damage. I'm gonna use Twin Sabers there. It's got plus 1 block. Um, and then Ahsoka, here's Ahsoka's attack. So I think she's doing 5 pierce 3, so I think she's doing enough, and that actually should be enough to kill it. Why is it only taking 12? 1, 2, 3, surge for plus 2 is 5, surge for pierce 3, that gets rid of the plus 1 block, energy shield, shield projector, uh, I don't get it. <clears throat> It was at eight. It had eight damage on it. So why is it only taking four? I always feel like I'm missing some command cards here. Oh, secondary processor. That's what we missed. So this was what it got played. Uh, it's a two-point card. Which is when you have suffered damage equal to your health, instead of being defeated, recover one damage, and that's for an elite um, CIS droid. Okay. So it basically used mil miracle worker on itself there to survive. That's why it lived on one health. And now it's activating an attack Ahsoka for seven damage. Okay, and now Obi-Wan gonna activate. Gonna use force push. Um, however, it says choose another small figure within three spaces. I don't see any small figures within three spaces of Obi-Wan because as you will recall, Octoparas a not small. So I think this might have been a misplay. Uh, so it's using force push thanks to um, what is it called? The force user card strike force. Oh, it dis it's using force push, but it discarded force surge for the strain. But what is he pushing with it? Is he going to push Ahsoka? I'm confused. Much confusion, but we'll go through it anyway. Um, Obi-Wan attacking the Octopara. Surge for Pierce 3, Surge for plus 2, Surge... I mean, he's got cleave, two cleave 2s, but he can't cleave anything. So it looks like we're going to do 5 damage Pierce 3. And how much health does this thing have? 5 health, so I think it should take it down. Yep, kills the Octopara. Gets 3 points. And now it looks like the... who's activating? The Droideka is activating, moves on to the blue objective to score two more points, 
which is now going to go all the way over to the yellow and the pro the droid deck has moved and is going to be attacking Ahsoka attacking Ahsoka has plus two accuracy and it's rolling blue and a yellow okay got has the range one two three four five naturally even and it's gonna do three damage it looks like and Ahsoka's got 10 health so I think Ahsoka's dead oh she's got plus one block oh she's got Obi there so we're gonna take two damage and then die I'm not sure why she's dead I'm sure there's command cards being played that I don't way off to the side okay well it looks like Ahsoka went down and now this Droideka just keeps on moving. I guess it used wheel form. And now we've got the focus Droideka with wheel form. Going to take two more VPs from the yellow objective. And it's going to go to the red. Okay, I'm gonna play fleet footed. Oh, this is Yoda. Okay, Republic. Master Yoda, we still have Mace down here, by the way. Okay, Yoda's gonna go for finishing off the Scorpionek. It's always rough with uh, Force users, they have a hard time doing. Uh, efficient damage without spending a whole huge attack so leaving a figure on one health can be very difficult for them to deal with now normally Obi-Wan helps solve that with the um, de deflect ability as would uh, anything else so yeah that um, that droid card that leaves you on one health really really strong with anything that has um, energy shield <clears throat> But Yoda is going to attack to take out the Scorpionic droid, which is going to bring John up to 11. Oh, we're just not going to add the, the, the VPs. We're just not going to add the VPs. Ten points. Okay, so John should be at 13. But he's busy right now activating Yoda and getting a bunch of kills with it because Yoda has Assault. And Ataru Mastery actually allowed it to allowed him to move one space. Um, but it looks like somebody is attacking uh, Obi Wan here. Confederates, what is going on, you guys? Cad Bane. Okay, so the best I can gather, John just forgot to add his kill points. He's adding them now. After Cad Bane activated, Cad Bane attacked Obi Wan. Didn't do any damage for some reason. Also, only rolled a single green. Like, what happened? I don't see any defensive cards, but he's moving and he rolled a green and he also got some power tokens. Okay, Mace activating. For uh, John, gonna steal the two VPs from the red objective, send it over to the yellow randomly continues moving so he's speed five so he's double moved at this point he spent two actions moving now the octopara is going to activate speed four looks like he's double moving over to the terminal okay and there's the end of part one so we're going to load up part two hopefully seamlessly 
And the score's pretty close right now. It's 17 to 15. Okay. And is that the end of the round? No, we still got some activations left. Oh no, it is the end of the round two, so this is round three. Palantir is playing Take Initiative. I don't think he's used Cad Bane yet. Uh, I don't know if he's used that ability, but it looks like he's activating him now. I think he's going to use it now. He's going to attack Mace Windu. John is forced to reveal element of surprise from his hand. Palantiri is going to discard. Is that negation? Gonna discard negation to force John to discard the element of surprise. Again, this is with Cad Bane. Attacking uh, Mace Windu here. Spends the Surge token. Oh, he's using Element of Surprise. That's right. So Mace Windu lost his defense dice. Gonna take one, two, three, four, five, three, four, five. So five damage, and Cad will get focused and get a power token. And able to get all the way up to the objective to get two more points. Oh, uh, Mace able to add plus one block thanks to Obi-Wan's Ardent Protector there. Even if you can't reroll, it can, he still adds the plus one damage. Okay, and now Django, it looks like Django is activating. So yeah, this is the double activation of uh, quicker draw, and then he's take initiative, and now he's activating Django, who it looks like is going to go for the collect bounty here, um, just to remove the white defense dice, I think, and then get a focus. I don't think he's expecting it to get the kill. Oh, he didn't. He went for the he went for the strafe. I don't know how he's getting. Oh, he's he used. Um, he must have played, yeah, he played Shared Experience. Okay, so he spent three of his six movement points from his move, and now he's using, to become focused, and now he's using his Strafe to attack. So it's two green, three dice attacks. Mace Windu blanks out. Gonna re-roll with Obi-Wan. And looks like Django re-rolled with something. Um, and also used the... Scavenge weaponry. I don't know how Django is re-rolling there. Uh, if you become focused, and move one die. He didn't do collect bounty. He did strafe. So I don't know how he's re-rolling there. Uh, maybe using a command card that I can't see. I see opportunistic was played, but it looks like Mace is going to take eleven or take uh, excuse me seven damage. And then Mace does get to move. He should have moved earlier. Although I guess maybe he didn't suffer enough damage. No, he did. After an attack, targeting you is resolved. If you suffer three more damage, become focused, then gain two movement points. So yeah, Mace is focused from that. He's getting two movement points. But Django is going to follow him thanks to Strafe. He gets a dodge, though. So Mace is going to survive. Django's going to spend two surges to get the two uh, damage power tokens. And that moves back three spaces. And now Mace going to go for the attack on Django. Oh, there's a command card being played here. Use at the start of a hostile figure's activation. That figure's player must choose for you one. End of the activation. Another figure of your choice suffers five damage. Or ready a friendly group. So it's very confusing because it's 
you're telling the opponent to choose for you to do something and then it's worded in a way of you but you is the opponent but you is me the player um, so what he what this does is John has to make a choice he needs to either end the activation so end Mace Windu's activation he needs to allow uh, Palantiri to deal five damage to any figure of Palantiri's choice or he needs to allow Palantiri to ready a friendly, to ready one of Palantiri's groups. Now Palantiri has already activated Django, uh, the Cad Bane, and the Octopara was exhausted for take initiative. Mace Windu has four health left, so he can't choose that. He can't choose to suffer 5 damage because then he'll just kill Mace Windu and Mace Windu will lose his activation. The same thing will happen if he chooses to end the current activation. So I think this is a pretty easy ready a friendly, let Palantir ready a group. These um, Sophie's Choice cards are always kind of interesting to try to design. You have to make them particularly strong for all of the choices to be good for the player using them when you're letting your opponent decide what your cards do. But with three choices, um, three points to ready a figure is pretty good. Okay, Mace is gonna go for the focused attack on Django. This is an automatic pierce three, so that's gonna help with that plus one block. Uh, he's also focused, so that might help him get his surges through for the plus two damage. He doesn't care about the cleave two and the gain two power tokens, whatever. He just really wants that surge for plus two to go through. So plus one block, plus one evade. That's unfortunate. He only got one surge. Pierce three is going to be good, though. Six damage. How much health does he have? He has ten, right? Oh, man. Oh, he's got the four surge. Is that, well, what does that do? What is this? I don't know what's happening. It's always confusing when players decide to do this uh, in their in their games. Obviously, nobody's, when nobody, you're not playing because somebody's watching, so I understand, but like, it's just, I get really confused by what the heck is happening. Okay, so six damage from the attack. I don't know why this got, dis this is on the table because this is at the end of the activation. So he's going to use it, so two damage, okay. So he's two damage short, so again. Um, Alright, so it looks like Django gets to activate again, thanks to the Cruel Ultimatum. Also, I just got the name, haha, <laughs> that's funny. I just realized the name of this card, Cruel Ultimatum, that's great. Props to Jjax for getting that in there. Uh, looks like Mace is going to die. So Palantir is going to get 10 points for that. And then Strafe going to allow him to take a shot at Yoda, who I don't think has used his dodge ability yet. So I think Yoda is going to probably be safe. Just add a dodge here. Does he have a once per round. No, they don't have that. So, But yeah, Yoda uses his uh, once per round there to add a dodge. Pretty strong ability. Okay, Yoda's going to activate. He's going to chase down uh, Django, it looks like. And then what is happening here? Two strain. Ah, he's using... Um, so that's a fantastic play by John to think of that. He used... Uh, the Force Strike Force, what is it called? Jedi Strike Force ability. So he, when he played Force Surge, he exiled it with Jedi Strike Force and is now able to play it again with Yoda. So Yoda took two actions to move all the way over here and then replay Jedi Strike Force, and he discarded these two cards for the strain cost, which is two. So Force Surge gonna kill Django. And John's going to get 8 points, so he should be at 21. Palantir's at 29. So John needs to get another kill on these Droidekas. Looks like the Droideka is activating. 
Yep, I'm gonna go for Yoda, who is now no longer protected by that dodge ability. The stray deca is focused from round one. And Yoda is gonna take four damage. And the droid deca did not roll a surge, so isn't gonna get be able to refocus. This droid deca is going to go for some VPs. So Palantir is doing really good. Using the droid deca here as very quick, fast figures to grab the VPs on this map is paying off really well. And gets pretty lucky there. Able to go get the other one. So able to get four VPs during this activation. And I believe that puts him at 33 to John's 23. And then it goes right back to the yellow where Cad Bane is. Uh, or I guess the green. Hopefully that means it's the green. Okay, Obi gonna activate. He is speed five. You know, you gotta get you gotta get your points somewhere. Uh I don't quite understand this. I wonder if this just means the game's over. I don't know why Obi's not... I mean, he's completely undamaged. He could easily clean up uh, the Droideka for 4 points. The Octopara next turn for 5. Yoda's fine. He's going to get a dodge against any attack. I feel like it's still anybody's game here. Because that's 9 points plus 24 is 33. So if he killed something, if he killed one of these guys this turn, and then killed the other one next turn, I don't understand. But it looks like they are going to the next round. I don't know why Obi-Wan's there. I think he's really focused on Cad Bane for some reason. So Yoda gonna activate, gonna take out, or try to take out the droid, but he doesn't because Yoda does not have built-in Pierce 3 and he does not roll any surges so he's not going to do any damage because he didn't do 4 damage uh, now Palantir gets to activate he's going to take that yep he's going to take the objective 2 more points goes to 37 and now the other droideka can just grab, zoom around and grab all the points he wants 39 And now John's in a tough spot. Yeah, go for that, Troideka. It's crazy how they both just swap places on opposite sides of the map, because that's how fast they are. So Obi's gonna pick up this kill. Oh, he's going after Cat no, he's doing this the cleave on Cad Bane. Okay, so now goes up to twenty-eight. Octopar is just gonna win the game here. And that's the game. So yeah, at the end there, unless I'm misunderstanding the state of the board, yeah, Obi-Wan had not activated yet. Um, so Obi-Wan was here when he started his activation. It's the end of the round. So I think instead of going up here like this to try and set up a kill on Cad Bane, and it's understandable since Cad Bane feels like he's kind of the most threatening figure in the list right now. Right now you're in the end game and you need to be figuring out how to get the most VPs you can in the shortest amount of time possible and prevent your opponent from getting as many VPs as they can get in the shortest amount of time possible. It's really all about the victory points, um, less so about like damage and positioning and stuff like that. So I think instead of double moving Obi-Wan in this way, uh, going after this uh, droid, Droideka, uh, and killing it, because it's only got four health left, so if you can do any damage to it at all with your attack, you should be able to kill it. Uh, kill that, and then on the next round, uh, you get to have act you get initiative on the next round. Um, you can move up here and kill this Octopara. Um, now you have you've gotten nine VPs, you've reduced 
The opponent's ability to scoop VPs off of the objectives by two figures, especially the Droideka, because the Droideka is so fast, as we've seen, we can, they can get multiple objectives in one activation. So they're really good at rushing these objectives. Um, then, after you've done that, now it's now Palantiri can't activate until after you've activated with Obi-Wan twice. They can't go for Yoda. I mean, they can go for Yoda, but they won't do any damage because he'll just dodge. If they go for Obi-Wan, great, whatever. He's full health. He's got all of his defensive abilities. Um, and then you could probably, like, double move Yoda out of there. Maybe not to full safety, but... Now, of course, if they kill Yoda, then you're they get to 40, but maybe you got to dodge with him on the dice, right? But give yourself a chance to win. You kill the Droideka, you go up to... 28. Next round, you kill the Octopara, you go up to uh, 33. That's before Palantiri can activate anything. Palantiri then can get, maybe maybe if he gets lucky, he can get 2 VP here, or 4 VPs total to go to 37. So it's 33 to 37. And then Yoda is what, speed 5? I don't know, depending on what cards you draw. Like, it'll be, st it'll still be tough to win from there, but at least you are removing these figures which are scoring VPs every time they activate. You're taking VPs, you're adding VPs to your VP total. You're taking away attacks. But yeah, uh, I think j just, I think that's what I would have done here instead of double moving Obi-Wan up here and then just letting these two droids run rampant and score all those VPs on the objectives. That being said, it was a fun game to watch. I think John got a little hurt by the matchup. I think energy shield is really rough for Jedi because they rely on that ping damage to kind of clean up and be efficient with their damage usage. Uh, and otherwise, it's like you force surge, deflection, a bunch of other stuff that Jedi use, like pretty much useless against a lot of these. So, um,. And Palantiri played the objective game really well. Uh, he was all over these objectives every round using the Droideka speed. They are so fast, like speed 6 is an interesting choice, especially since they can do it. They can do that twice, so they can move 12. Um, I know in my designs that I've done for Droideka, it's always a special action. That wheel form is always a special action that lets them move really fast, but not like do it twice in an activation so that's pretty strong but that was the finals congratulations to palantiri for winning the tournament uh it was really fun it was a lot of fun it was fun to kind of see things go from like pre-testing alpha stage and then jjax like every round was like oh yeah i gotta fix that i gotta replace that i'm gonna be talking to him for a podcast episode um this afternoon uh it'll be really interesting to hear his thoughts on everything I think I love that he invited the community to, in to do this, to play the cards, get invested, be competitive. Like, I really enjoyed how he did that. Um, kudos to Jjax for doing all that, setting it up, having some vision and executing a plan, uh, especially as a one man operation. Loved it. Five stars. Love the process. Obviously, there's going to be hitches. Obviously, there's stuff that's not going to work or isn't balanced or isn't worded right, but that all comes with uh, improvement and iteration, and that is the whole design process. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, I know I got a little ranty there, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you for the next one.